This segment of the tutorial will introduce cell communication. Cell-cell interfaces and junctions will be introduced. Signaling between cells. Cell signal receptors. Significance of G protein. Cell-cell contact. This is a schematic of an outer cell membrane. Cell-to-cell -cell contacts are vital in multicellular organisms. There are four kinds of cell junctions in vertebrate cells. Tight junctions, adherence junctions, gap junctions, and desmosomes. Plant cells have plasma desmata as a junction between their cells. They are microscopic channels facilitating transport and cell-cell communication. Tight junction. Tight junctions seal adjacent epithelial cells in a narrow band just beneath their surface. See how the tight junctions are between these different epithelial cells. The functions of tight junctions include block the movement of integral membrane proteins between the two surfaces of the cell, prevent the passage of molecules and ions through the spaces between the cells, adherence junctions. Adherent junctions consist of cadherins and catenins and provide strong mechanical attachments. Adherence junctions. Catenin. Cadherins are transmembrane proteins that forms homodimers. Beta catenin and alpha catenin form a complex with the intracellular portion of the catenin molecule. Gap junctions. Gap junctions are a junction between certain animal cell types. They allow different molecules and ions, usually intracellular signaling molecules, to pass between cells. Notice an open and a closed junction. One gap junction is made up of two connexins that connect across the intercellular space. These are similar to plasma desmata that join plant cells. Gap junctions are in almost all cells except mobile cells. They are important in cardiac cells to pass information to contract the heart. Desmosome junctions. Desmosomes are localized patches that hold two cells together very tightly. They're attached to intermediate filament in skin cells. Desmosomes belong to the cadherin family of adhesion molecules. They attach the cell surface protein to the cell's cytoskeleton. They are transmembrane proteins that form a bridge between adjacent epithelial cells. Paracrine signaling. Paracrine signaling is between close cells. The chemical signal is called the paracrine agent. Both paracrine and autocrine signaling is between cells that are close. But paracrine signaling affects cells of a different type than the cell doing the signal secretion. Autocrine signaling affects cells of the same type. Endocrine signaling. Major endocrine glands. Penial, pituitary, thyroid, thymus, adrenal, pancreas, ovary, and testes. The endocrine signal is a distant signal. In endocrine signaling, a signal molecules, hormones, are released into the bloodstream and act on target cells distributed throughout the body. 
Target cells have receptors that bind the hormones. Endocrine signaling acts at a distance. The target cell is distant from the cell that is making the signal, the hormone. Signal reception. A signal is bound by a receptor. Receptors are specific for their target signal, like a lock and key fit. The receptor is a protein on the cell membrane or in the cytoplasm or cell nucleus that binds a specific molecule, called the ligand. Ligands change the behavior of receptor proteins, resulting in physiological changes. extracellular space, intracellular space, and P for plasma. This is a transmembrane receptor. Receptor types. There are three classes of receptors. Receptors tyrosine kinases, RTK. G protein coupled receptors, GPCR. And intracellular receptors, Receptor tyrosine kinase. Characteristics. RTK is a transmembrane protein having kinase enzyme activities. It has an extracellular ligand binding domain. It has an intracellular tyrosine kinase domain. And an intracellular regulatory domain. The transmembrane domain ligand binding activates the kinase by a phosphorylation and dimerization. Notice in this schematic, this is RTK, binding a ligand. It forms a dimer and is phosphorylated. This is the activated form of the RTK. 7 classes of RTK. Class 1, EGF receptor, NU, HER2, and HER3. Class 2, insulin receptor and IGF receptor. Class 3, PDGF receptors, C-kit. Class 4, FGF receptors. Class 5, vascular endothelial cell growth factor receptor. Class 6, hepatocyte growth factor and scatter factor receptors. And Class 7, neurotrophin receptor, families TRKA, B, C, and NGF receptor. G-protein coupled receptor a receptor containing seven transmembrane domains. The receptor has a cellular domain that binds to G proteins. Outside, inside, cell membrane, cytoplasm side, ligand binding site. Notice the seven domains. The G protein binding on the cytoplasm side. Three kinds of G-protein receptors. Photoreceptors, transduction, decrease CGMP concentration. Adenylate cyclase activator, GPCRs, increase cyclic AMP concentration. PLCG, GPCRs, increase diacylglycerol and inositol triphosphate. Cyclic AMP, DAG, IP3, and cyclic GMP are all second messengers. GPCR signal transduction. Four steps of GPCR signal transduction. One, a signal molecule binds to a receptor inducing a conformation change. 2. G protein activation. An inactive G GDP protein now binds GTP, 
replacing GDP. G protein has its GTP hydrolyzed and activates G protein. Meanwhile, GTP hydrolyzation activates other inactive enzymes. Intracellular hormone receptors. Hormone receptors are proteins within the cytoplasm. Therefore, it does not require all of the previous signal transduction pathways. Hormones pass through membranes freely. These receptors have a double function. They're capable of binding hormones. Upon binding, they can translocate to the nucleus and directly activate gene transcription.